Good morning and greetings to all participants of the Berlin African Development Forum. Greetings from the Seychelles. I very much regret that I'm unable to be present in person, but I appreciate immensely the opportunity afforded to me by ICD and the partners of the forum to nonetheless be able to offer my contribution through this message. I have always appreciated being able to engage in such events organized by ICD as they offer a space where experiences can be shared and sustainable policy options can be appropriately debated and, where necessary, adapted to meet the needs of others. It is obvious also to me that ICD provides a unique lens through which these debates can be analyzed, one which is not anchored in preconceptions, but which seeks rather to build understanding based on the cultural framework in which these policies were conceptualized. I have been privileged to attend previous events uh, organized by ICD in my previous roles as Minister of Foreign Affairs of Seychelles and also as Minister of Finance, Trade and the Blue Economy. And I'm calling on those experiences for my remarks today where I address you as the Minister of Health of Seychelles and which relate to the question of sustainable investments in the health sector in the context of an African small island developing state. In years past, it has been an assumption in the realm of development, that developing nations cannot initially aspire to the same standards of healthcare as more developed nations. In some interpretations of development economics, some African countries have even been told directly that they should prioritize productive sectors and that healthcare improvements will occur as a result of fast paced economic growth, but not necessary to give attention to that sector in itself. The sustainability of any investments in the healthcare sector are obviously linked to the good economic performance of any given economy. But perhaps even more importantly, long-term investment in health creates the right environment for sustainable economic growth. We can all be encouraged that the adoption of the Sustainable Development Goals by the United Nations has effectively ended the economy first argument as the goals implicitly recognize the interconnected nature of the objectives the world has set itself. Sustainable Development Goal number three, ensuring healthy lives and well-being at all ages, is inextricably connected to all the other goals. And many of the actions that it entails create the platforms for long-term economic growth. I will take a moment to briefly describe the Seychelles experience of investment in the health sector and discuss the implica implications that these have on our future development, as well as the questions that still need to be addressed in relation to the challenges we face. Some are unique to small countries like Seychelles and others are universal. Since independence, the Seychelles government has prioritized health development within its public investment program. Every year, more than 10% of the budget is allocated to the sector. In the late 1970s, the government introduced free health coverage at the point of access for the whole population. And since then, the main method of funding the system has been through direct taxation and allocations in the government budget. Indeed, the National Health Accounts Report of 2015 shows that over 90% of investment in the sector has come through the government budget. This is very high compared to peer countries in the African region, and even in relation to OECD countries where investment and spending by the private sector is much more consequential. But with a small population of only 93,000, the preponderance of government investment is not that surprising. A recent report undertaken by the World Bank on the efficiency and value for money of investment in our health sector did, however, show that Seychelles has achieved remarkable returns on investment and offers excellent outcomes for relatively modest sums invested. Ultimately, we must recognize a fundamental truth in all countries of all sizes. If the government is not prepared to lead investment in healthcare, then the risk of inequity in outcomes is heightened. Seychelles has achieved excellent outcomes in relation to its investment in health. The Mo Ibrahim Index has ranked Seychelles first in Africa in relation to access to healthcare and quality of outcomes. Some of our key indicators, our infant mortality rate is 10.9 per 1,000. Our annual maternal mortality rate remains very low, with only one death in 2017. 
while our vaccination coverage is above 90% in all the key vaccines that we provide. And despite the reliance on the government budget, the spend on health represents just 3.5% of GDP, which remains low compared both to African peer countries and even compared to OECD countries. This underlines a relative efficiency which has been achieved, as well as showing us an opportunity to be able to invest further in quality care by mobilizing additional investment in the economy, in the local economy, into healthcare. The key message in terms of what Seychelles has achieved in healthcare is that long term and systematic, predictable, government led investment into the sector brings about positive results which also boost equality and reduce poverty. In terms of the specific challenges faced by an African small island developing state, it is important to understand that while our smallest in size represents an advantage in terms of quickly rolling out public health programs that can cover the majority of the population, the same smallness of size presents challenges in terms of investment in advanced and specialized care in the longer term. The first challenge to keep in mind is the constant rise of the burden of non-communicable diseases. As incomes have risen across the world, the impact of NCDs has also become much more significant. In Seychelles, 11% of the population are now estimated to have diabetes, while we have the highest obesity rate in Africa. And unfortunately, the trend is accelerating. As our 2015 Global Youth Health Survey showed, 26% of teenagers were either overweight or obese. We have recently increased our spend on prevention programs, but the challenges of NCDs are that they, are, they immediately translate into a higher burden in relation to hospital-based care, with the consequence being that resources required for tertiary care continues to increase, and therefore placing pressure on staffing levels as well as quality of care. The high NCD burden has also increased demand for more advanced specialist care, which for certain procedures have to be referred overseas. We are actively working to provide more of these specialist services in Seychelles, but this is where our small population means that it is difficult to sustain highly specialized treatment in a small target population. In a small island setting, the human resource challenge remains one of the most pressing. Our small population means that most citizens have easy access to health professionals, but the challenge is to ensure that the need for more and more specialist expertise is addressed. This is one of the areas where we are investing significantly to train more and more specialized health professionals to redu reduce the need for overseas referrals, which are costly to the economy. As Seychelles hosted last year, the World Health Organization Ministerial Meeting for African Small Island Developing States, a common thread that emerged among Africans, Africa's island nations is that while we are usually quick to achieve many of the health goals based on best buys such as vaccination, it costs us more per capita to invest in more complex infrastructure and to train and recruit specialist personnel. Thus, many islands are able to provide good access to healthcare, but the challenge is to invest in higher quality care in the longer term. And when assessing the long-term investment in health in island nations, we must also consider the impact that the threat of climate change will have for our population. Through the warming of the ocean, climate change can already destabilize one of our main sources of nutrition, which is of course our fishing sector. In addition, the increased risk from natural disasters that is prevalent in relation to climate change, as well as other destabilizing factors relating to water availability, food production, and safe housing, mean that we must factor in building resilience against climate change into our health sector investments. To conclude, I would like to briefly comment on some opportunities that exist. In the Seychelles context, the relatively small proportion of GDP invested into the health sector represents an opportunity to engage more meaningfully with the private sector about long-term investments in infrastructure and quality care. There is scope for public-private partnerships that build on our existing achievements. 
We can also explore new ways to mobilize domestic financing through, for example, insurance mechanisms that can further build opportunities for the private and public sector. For small island states and for African nations, there are also opportunities to further reduce the cost of medicines and vaccines through pooled procurement initiatives. This is the focus of many of our discussions with WHO with a view to providing more predictable pricing and access to critical inputs in the health sector. So dear friends, Seychelles has achieved the goal of universal coverage with free access to healthcare at the point of use. We should not underestimate this achievement, but we are very cognizant that we must also seek to innovate and we must seek new investments that can help us further lead the charge towards quality care. We are aiming to benchmark ourselves against the best performing OECD countries. It's about aiming higher and always trying to do better. Ultimately, sustaining investment into the healthcare sector is critical to sustain economic development in all countries. And in Seychelles, in line with the Sustainable Development Goals, we seek a health in all approach, where we look to inculcate the necessary investments in all the different sectors which contribute to consistent health outcomes. It has been a real pleasure for me to be able to share these thoughts uh, with you today. I'm sorry I'm unable to be with you in person to debate and analyze this subject, which is a critical issue for all African countries. But I trust that my contribution has nonetheless, nonetheless helped to stimulate your reflections. I wish you all the best in your continued deliberations. Thank you.